If you've been working in JavaScript for a while, you may have run across third-party code that has the following at the top of the file or inside of a function. That seems a bit weird, right? We don't normally just have strings floating around in our code unassigned to any variables. You'd think it would throw a syntax error, and normally it would, but JavaScript engines know to interpret this particular line of code as us telling them to turn on strict mode. So what the heck is strict mode? Well, it's basically a version of JavaScript that disallows certain shortcuts and fuzzy implementations. Today we're going to talk about how it changes error handling. When using JavaScript, you may have noticed it doesn't always throw errors. In fact, one of my favorite, and by favorite, I mean I'm going to tear all of my hair out and scream profanities at my screen, issues with JavaScript, is the famous, the code throws no errors but nothing happens either result that one often runs into. One of the things strict mode does is cause a bunch of these silent errors to throw actual errors instead. This has its pros and cons. Sometimes it's nice to have your app not die completely due to a minor error. On the other hand, good practice is to handle, or at least attempt to handle, every error. And if you don't know your app is generating errors, it's kind of hard to handle them. There are a bunch of these, so we're going to run through them relatively quickly. First, if you're in regular mode and you assign a variable without using the keywords var, let, or const, it'll still work by just assigning the new variable to the global object. So this is going to work once we comment out use strict. Save that and refresh, and we get test. Even though we didn't say var test var equals test or const test var equals test. In strict mode, that code fails and throws an error because test var has not been previously defined, and the JS engine is no longer allowed to make the assumption that you want it attached to the global object. Uncomment this, save, refresh. Test var is not defined. Second, there are default objects, variables, and the like in JavaScript that cannot be reassigned, for example, undefined or NAN. In regular mode, attempting to reassign those variables just fails quietly, like this. By the way, I have to delete each of these because we can't have an error without a bunch of try-catch blocks. It's just easier to do it this way. Save that. Nothing happens. However, if you console log undefined, you're still getting undefined, not 10, because those cannot be reassigned. Now, uncomment use strict, and we get an error. Cannot assign to read-only property undefined. Third, you can't delete undeletable object properties, including both those the JavaScript engine sets as undeletable by default and ones you set as undeletable manually. In regular JS, this is another silent fail, but it'll throw an error in strict mode. If you've ever looked this up anywhere else on the web, this is literally the example everybody uses for this one. Nothing's happening. But trust me, nothing's happening. If we log it, we see that it's still a full constructor with lots of methods. Enable use strict, and we're going to get another fancy error. Cannot delete property prototype of function object native code. It's not a deletable property. Fourth, you can't have duplicate function parameter names. Observe this code. With use strict off, when we save this and run it, we're going to get Joe42. Because in non-strict mode, JavaScript just takes the value given to the second instance of name. However, that first parameter is still technically available via arguments zero. See? That's still kind of fuzzy and not great. I can't think of a situation in which you'd want to have two or more identical parameter names. Seems to me like that'd be a mistake at least 90% of the time. And for the way I code, more like 99.9999%. Strict mode would throw an error instead of allowing you to do it. And there we go. Duplicate parameter name not allowed in this context. Fifth. Strict mode forbids adding leading zeros to numbers because it conflicts with octal syntax. I frankly have never used octals and am not going to talk about them here, at least not right now. But just know that the following code will log 13 in regular JavaScript. Watch. Note also the weird syntax highlighting we get because that's an octal and not a number. Save. Fresh. 13. 
remove these, save, refresh. Octal literals are not allowed in strict mode. So how do you use octals in strict mode? Because you might need octals for something. Well, the answer is you need to preface them with zero lowercase o instead of just a leading zero, like this. Save that, and we'll get back to 13. And finally, in both regular and strict mode, you can't set properties on primitives. In regular JavaScript, it'll fail silently, and in strict mode, it will, you guessed it, throw an error. So you can't do anything like this. That, turn this off. With use strict off, we get undefined because you can't add a property to a primitive and strings are primitives. With use strict on, uncaught type error cannot create property is weird on string. Why go all the way to Alaska to punch someone when you can punch someone right here? So there you have it a bunch of silent failures in regular JavaScript that throw errors when you switch to strict mode. Next week, we'll talk about some of the other behavior that strict mode forbids. See you then.